Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by Emmy Award winning journalist, TV correspondent, podcaster, author, and founder of Carrie Media. Most importantly, mom of three kids. <laughs> Her latest project is writing, You Don't Have to Carry It All, Ditch the Mom Guilt, and Find a Better Way Forward. We welcome Paula Ferris. Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me on the program. Paula, let's go beyond the mic. You lost your job at the beginning of the pandemic. I did. Why was writing this book so important for you? Well, okay. So at, at the point that I lost my job at the right at the beginning of the pandemic, like so many other mothers, I realized what had happened and that, you know, look, we're the default for so much, the mothers, and we were disproportionately uh, pushed out of the workplace. But I wrote the book because of my own experience, Sean, in the workplace. It's insane that once we become mothers, we are paid less, valued less, and scrutinized more. And that's not feeling. That is an actual fact. So as a journalist, you know, I'm supposed to suss out inequities. And one of the biggest inequities that I have seen is the treatment of mothers. We're not celebrated. Uh, We are scrutinized and we're punished once we do have kids. And so I want to change the game for working moms. And this book, um, I say it's a hug and it's a sword, Sean. It's a hug and a sword for a better way towards uh, working and momming. But it also shows society um, how they can give working moms the support they need and deserve, but also the why. I think we have to answer the why because a lot of people are skeptical. What's the biggest mom guilt trip you ever put on yourself trying to balance having a career and family? Well, I think, you know, back in 2018, when I pumped the brakes at the height of my career in broadcasting, when I stepped away from Good Morning America, um, anchoring the weekends and co-hosting The View, I just didn't feel like I was nailing it when I was working. I felt like I should be momming. When I was momming, I felt like I should be working. I was carrying so much tension. And so... I really think like it was in that point, like I I was carrying so much guilt. And here's the reality about mom guilt, Sean. The majority of mothers in America feel mom guilt to some extent. 80 to 90 percent of moms are feeling mom guilt. But what I learned in writing this book, I had a chance to put my journalist hat on and keep my mom hat on, is that it's an American problem. Mom guilt was made in the U.S. of A. And so there's a lot of steps that I go through in the book to ditch the mom guilt and find that better way forward. But I think once we realize and we contextualize um, what's happening and we peel back the layers, how did we get to this point? Why is it so hard to be a working mom in America? Why is it harder to be a mom here in this country than anywhere else? Um, I think it's a real freeing message that um, I hope just lightens the load for so many moms and lets them know that they're not alone. Paula, you've worked in Chicago, Cincinnati, Dayton, New York, and so many other places doing so many amazing things. I did. Where were you when you found your true purpose and calling and how did that freak your heart and soul? Well, here's the thing, you know, I, I, um, when I stepped away from GMA and The View and then I lost my job in 2020, um, I realized like our callings change, Sean. So I, I feel like I was gifted. We're all gifted certain talents and gifts. Okay. Mine are curiosity and asking questions and kind of getting to the bottom of things. I mean, my nickname growing up, Sean, was Paula 20 questions. I was such an annoying child. So God has a sense of humor that I've actually been able to do something with this. But I think we're called to different things in different seasons. So I don't look at it as we have just one purpose. We take the talents and gifts that we've been given and then we use those in different seasons. So there was a season when I really felt that I needed to be home with my kids a lot more. Now this new season, I really feel called to change the game for working moms. There's, We just shouldn't be uh, scrutinized. We should be celebrated. We're furthering society, but all the data, all the facts show different. I mean, Sean, I don't know if you're a dad or not, but do you, have you ever heard of the terms working dad, um, dad guilt? They don't uh, exist. No, dad, daddy gap, dad penalty, the dad tax. No, because those don't, those don't really exist. Yeah, they don't exist. So why is it that we are punished um, for furthering society? So I really want, again, just to give moms a hug and a sword through this book, but also to show we need allies. I mean, Sean, I'm glad you're having this conversation with me. I have an entire chapter dedicated to inviting men into the conversation. We need allies in this fight. We can't emasculate men and push them out of the conversation. We need parents and non-parents because at the end of the day, this is really about not just supporting mothers in the workplace, but it's about supporting families. And I think the reason we are in the situation we're in in this country is because of two things, how we devalue families and how we treat mothers in the workplace. And we all have a responsibility to get it right. Mine was shut up, Sean. (laughs) Paula Ferris, 
author of You Don't Have to Carry It at All, Ditch the Mom Guilt and Find a Better Way Forward, joins us for The Rocking Eight. Now, Paula, your name was Paula 20 Questions. Now it's time for my eight questions. Eight random questions. All you got to do is answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. <laughs> Let's do it. Weirdest thing you ever found in your purse from a road trip? Um, my son's dirty underwear. Sorry. <laughs> don't judge me. The one thing all moms need is? Um, grace. A book your kids love being read to sleep each night with? A book that my kids love that I, well, my kids are like, I have elementary school, junior high and high school. So it just, it, I love, there's a Louis Giglio series that I love reading to my youngest about a science and creation. So that's the one. Paula, what's the one thing you do each night for yourself? One thing I do, uh, have a glass of wine. <laughs> Sorry, you want me to keep it real, right? <laughs> we keep it real here on Beyond the Mic. Other than the episode with your mom and husband, favorite of your Paula Ferris podcast episodes? Oh, um, it's it's with Al Roker and his wife, Deborah Roberts. I mean, they are complete opposites. They are hilarious. Hands down, one of my favorite conversations ever. Paula, what's the one thing your mom taught you that you want to pass on to your daughter? Compassion. What card game are you awesome at? Golf. Also, sequence. Have you played sequence? I will take you down, Sean. I'm quite competitive. I am, too. I'm cutthroat. What's your favorite charity? Boys and Girls Clubs of America. I'm a trustee. Which ways were your husband, John, the most helpful with Caroline, JJ, and Landon? I, you know, I love that my husband is very hands-on. And look, this has been a real journey. And we've had our own struggles um, in our marriage and in parenting. It's not perfect. But he's so active and involved in being present with them, whether it's taking them to their sporting events um, he's now cooking dinner and being more involved in those quote unquote domestic duties, which like I want to have a good partner and I want my kids to see that that if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, it should be a partnership. You should be supporting one another. So he's really stepped it up like in the kitchen, those again, quote unquote domestic duties, but also just being present with the kids, sewing into them, being a good example. And, you know, he's a coach at heart. So really coaching them up and coaching them to be good people and good humans and confident humans. It's time for one big question with the author of You Don't Have to Carry It All, Ditch the Mom Guilt and Find a Better Way Forward, Paula Ferris, beyond the mic. Okay. Recently was the anniversary of your father's passing and your mom recently had a stroke. Mm -hmm. How tight do you hold and cherish her now? Oh, uh, gosh, I like beyond. I mean, when you lose a parent, I say it's like, you know, your tectonic plates have shifted. And my mom had a stroke and then she had seizures over the holiday. It's just it makes you so grateful. But I'm also like I I know that this isn't the end. So I, I cherish every day that we have together so much more. But I also know, again, like this isn't the end for us. And I look I look towards the day when I can see my dad again. So. I, I I know we're going to be reunited forever. Outstanding. <laughs> she found her son's dirty underwear in her purse, ran out of time before we could talk about her cheerleading career <laughs> and watch you to read, you don't have to carry it all. Ditch the mom guilt and find a better way forward. Paula Ferris, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. And that, my friends, is a Beyond Mike Shortcut. 